This show is clean, pretty much. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 668. Hello, it's Mike Matthews broadcasting from the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Today we hear from Madame Rutabaga, Valentino Bison Bentley. Plus, it's the finale of my into an interview with Ben Bloom of the Seattle band Polyrhythmics. And yes, you heard the big news. Stephen Colbert is replacing David Letterman. Mike's Daily Podcast. We'll find out what people had to say about it and if they thought that he was the better man. Mike's Daily Podcast. And yesterday we had an interesting incident that involved a disgruntled fiddle player. He, I did not know, is a big fan of Slayer, but he wanted me to join his Wrong Side of History Club. I told him no thank you, but I said, hey, if there's any chance, do you think you could rub my back? There's this like little tight spot right here. Mike's Daily Podcast. To which he ran away. So, Crap FC has a new commercial, oh yay. Mike's For us to watch. Daily To podcast. Make me angry. Yeah! I've been talking about how bad the Crap FC commercials have been lately because they've been trying to imitate vines and do the really quick edits and uh, they were having a mom a couple of mothers on talking about how they can't feed their kids they don't have enough time and oh kids will eat K- uh, crap sorry crap FC what a surprise hey it's fun increasing the chances for diabetes so the latest crap FC commercial that I saw has what a surprise two college kids two college males two white college males sitting there discussing I don't know they're Tender their fingers, their their wings, whatever the heck they sell. Okay, college students eat a lot of crap. That's true. They just inhale it. For the most part, a lot of them don't know how to cook. This is the first time that they're away from home and they're learning to cook. And they're learning to see, oh, if you open up this macaroni and cheese box and then add this strange powder stuff, well, my gosh, you've got macaroni and cheese. It's the most delicious thing on the planet. Oh, Top Ramen. Similar concept. Where I went to school at UCSB, I was very lucky to have Freebirds, which is now a national chain. They make those huge burritos, sort of Chipotle style. Ah, that's where I gained my first 50 pounds. Yes, so that's... The other thing was, I think they should take away texting rights for people. Some people do not know how to text correctly. I don't get a lot of texts. But, well, I I had my experience with this recently because on Craigslist, I'm trying to rent out one of the rooms in this house that I live in. And the person who wrote me back obviously was writing on his phone and just wrote the most incoherent, impossible bit of verbiage I have ever seen. I could not read it. I just said, if this is how this guy writes... I don't want to even try to cohabitate with this person. So that was texting. There, there's spell check. There's autocorrect. How are people getting this wrong? My fingers were not designed for the iPhone. I have big, fat, chubby fingers, and I cannot type for on the iPhone. But autocorrect helps me out and i've worked out a way to oh okay this is how you do it da 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 and occasionally i'll drop punctuation i understand that's the, some of the rules you can get around in texting but come on when it starts looking like a kidnapper's note oh look who has entered the last place on earth hello my god exactly do you want to rent my room no my god that's okay but Michael Matthew, what I said just then was incoherent. Why would you want me to be a roommate? Yeah, but your incoherence is part of your charm. Thank you. Look who else just walked in. Oh, dear Mike, this is Valentino, the parking attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know, dude? Mike, back when I lived in college, I ate some really bad stuff. Yeah, for a whole year, I was addicted to stir fry. Do you know, dude? It's true, Mike, back in college. Bison Bentley was stir-frying all the time, day. 
The apartment smelled like a donut shop. Wow, that doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, it's bad. Donut shop's bad. Valentina, are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. My body was reacting to the calories of which I was discussing. Day. I don't eat stir fries anymore either. Like I said last show, I've become a vegetarian. Do you know that? Oh, that's right. You eat nothing but peas. Yeah. Okay. In fact, I hope you don't mind. I've got a truck that's backing into the last place on Earth and dumping a bunch of frozen peas for me. Do you know that? Oh, no. That's where I that's, uh, uh, That was a wall. Hey, so Stephen Colbert is taking over for David Letterman next year. So a lot of people chimed in right afterwards, including Jimmy Fallon. And, you know, Stephen Colbert was on Jimmy Fallon's show just a few weeks ago since Jimmy Fallon has had The Tonight Show. So it was interesting. In that moment, we had two people who will become dire enemies. Because that was always Jimmy Fallon's thing, is he would make fun of Stephen Colbert being on, like, a basic cable channel that nobody watches. So he would, you know, and here I am. I'm on NBC. Look at me. La-di-da. But now Stephen Colbert is going to be on a major network head-to-head against Jimmy Fallon and Kimmel, for that matter. So... This is what was said by Jimmy, though. He said on Twitter, I would like to welcome the great Stephen Colbert to Network Late Night and also congratulate him on his new name, Jimmy Colbert. Jimmy Kimmel congratulated him on Twitter as well, saying, Congratulations to Stephen Colbert, a finer or funnier man I do not know. And then the executive producer for The Late Show... Barbara Gaines, she wrote, I wake up from a colonoscopy. Thanks, Dr. James Marion. And Stephen Colbert has been named the successor. I can't leave my desk for a minute. John Stewart, who basically gave Stephen Colbert his start on The Daily Show. Stephen Colbert did a bunch of segments, was one of the correspondents. He even did a thing with Steve Carell called Even Stephen that used to be really funny where they would debate back and forth over some kind of issue. Uh, so John Stewart said to New York Magazine, he's done an amazing job with just that very narrow cast of character, but he's got a lot more that he can show. And that will be interesting to see Stephen Colbert, because that's his whole thing, right? On the Colbert Report, he's pretending to be a conservative, a, a total like a blowhard Fox News conservative. And that's what makes But it is so funny the way he does it. It takes shots at the conservatives while he's doing that. In fact, Rush Limbaugh said, CBS has just declared war on the heartland of America. <laughs> wah, wah, I'm big and fat. No longer is comedy going to be a covert assault on traditional American values. Conservatives. He said, now it's just wide out in the open. Oh, like you're wide out in the open. Like your show is on every single radio station in the heartland, I'm doing little bunny ears with my fingers now. Oh, and Fox News isn't wide out in the open. Stephen Colbert's contract with Comedy Central and the Colbert Report is going to end at the end of this year. And Comedy Central said they're going to replace him. Yes, according to USAToday.com, the Colbert Report will remain on the air through December as the cable network seeks a replacement. Quote, Comedy Central is proud that the incredibly talented Stephen Colbert has been part of our family for nearly two decades. We look forward to the next eight months of the groundbreaking Colbert Report and wish Stephen the very best, says a spokesperson. Now, obviously the name will change, but there are quite a few correspondents now on The Daily Show that could probably take over and do sort of a similar themed type mock conservative show like Stephen Colbert is doing. But he is talented. He's got the singing chops. He's got the comedic timing. Now, why didn't Chelsea Handler get it? Why didn't a woman finally get put in that position? Or someone who is not white? Nigerian-American writer, photographer, and art historian Teju Cole was less upbeat about Stephen's new gig, writing, In spite of being white, male, straight, popular, competent, and rich, Stephen Colbert has overcome the odds and succeeded. And there's more about that in today's podcast picture. 
which you can find at mikesdailypodcast.com. Speaking of which, go there to find links to where to listen to the show in iTunes, and you can subscribe to us there. There's also the link to where to find us on Facebook. And like our Facebook page when I post a new show, share it with your friends so that more people find out about Mike's Daily Podcast. There's also links to where to find us on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Stitcher, YouTube, Yelp. We're on MixCloud. And there's also the Amazon deal of the day. Click on that and buy something, and that helps support the show. There's also the blog, The Daily Podcast. Picture at mikesdailypodcast.com. And if you would like to email me and tell me what you think about this whole Stephen Colbert replacing David Letterman, or what do you think about late night shows in general, email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. But please, when you write me, use something that somehow resembles grammar. I mean, you can text it. I'll I'll understand some of the limits of texting, but geez, that Craigslist email I got. The worst. I will search for that and try and read that for you. Oh, wait. It wouldn't matter anyway because I can't read it. Anyway, you can email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. And if you would like to be a guest on the show or sponsor the show, you can also email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. Into an interview. I'm speaking with Ben Bloom of Polyrhythmics, a fantastic band. All kind of, you, you just every, let's say, Afro, um, jazz, uh, how would you define it? Sort of a, a mishmash funk in there. <laughs> Uh, um, yeah, you know that's an interesting description. We we uh, we typically describe our music as modern Afrobeat and polyrhythmic funk music. I see. Okay. There and it's whatever it is. It's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. What instrumental music did you enjoy growing up? Gosh, you know, um, growing up, I, I I I tended to always gravitate towards instrumental music. Everything from um, the extended instrumental stuff of Frank Zappa. To you know, jazz music, Wes Montgomery, Grant Green, um, all kinds of guitar players like that, and, and musicians, Miles Davis, John Coltrane, and then you know, as I got a little bit older and was more interested in groove-based music, um, you know, bands, you know, like the the, the album, the Doc Tari's record, for example, was a, a band out of New York that was really, really, really hip for me, and um, bands like Medeski, Martin, and Wood, um, and then you know. Also, also things like Chicago, some of the instrumental Chicago stuff, or Tower of Power, um, Maceo Parker, James Brown, Fela Kuti, and then on to bands like the Budos Band, um, the Datones, things like that. How about Spyro Gyro? Gyra. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, we did listen to a little Spyro Gyro. We played a couple uh, Spyro Gyro cover bands, uh, cover tunes in my first band in high school, as a matter of fact. So, uh, really? So yeah, Weather Report, Spyro Gyro, all that stuff. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Uh, okay. Wow. Gosh, you are so, you are so well knowledge, Ben Bloom. All the well, music I'm doing my best. You know, we're, we're we're learning every day, and you know, uh, we, we all of the members of the Polyrhythmics have had a long life of music. Um, so, kind of putting all that together makes for a very very interesting playlist in the band. Well, it, it, it's amazing. Like I was talking about the uh, first uh, part of the interview, we were talking, and I saw the video on KEXP that you guys did, KEXP.org, a radio station out of Seattle. And and just to watch you guys play is just fantastic. You're having so much fun, and it, it, you got, it, you're just so good at it. And, oh, it's inspiring. I want to be, I want to join an instrumental band. If only I could play, <laughs> if only I could play an instrument. Uh, well, um, you could, maybe you could sing. La la sha- so I'd have to do the because it's instrumental. What I have to do, kind of the bad boop 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 boo, bad kind of thing. Exactly, scatting. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and, I, and just based on what I hear over the phone here, I think you have a career ahead of you. Ah, see, Ben, who wouldn't want to be in a band band with Ben Bloom? <laughs> I love the alliteration of that sentence. You, you, I think, <laughs> I think you. Uh, that's probably why you are able to keep all these. This this band of of nine people, right? Nine, is it? Yeah. So there's eight musicians, and and also uh, we have one um, one girl who travels with us named Lauren, who's our official merch manager. I see. Okay. And can she play an instrument? She can. She's actually a vocalist, a very talented jazz ah, trained vocalist. Wow. Excellent. 
And yeah, uh, I think and 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 your logo is cool, and you've got that on some merch. We do this this tour in particular. We have all kinds of stuff. We have koozies. We got t-shirts. We have CDs. We have records. We have forty fives. We have buttons and stickers and all kinds of stuff for people to buy. Cool. We'll have to pick one of those up. So you are. Let's say. So this is playing on Thursday. Uh, so just want to say the shows coming up include tomorrow night, Friday at the Loft Tahoe at State Line in Nevada. Uh, Saturday, you're at the Boom Boom Room in San Francisco. And Sunday at Harlow's Nightclub in Sacramento. So all those places here nearby in the Bay Area. And, and, yeah, and also Sebast- Sebastopol on Thursday night. Right. Oh, yeah. So that would be tonight if you're. Uh, to, that, yeah, exactly. That would be tonight's show. Yep. Uh, we're thinking we're we're time traveling here, Ben. You and I right now. It's it's strange because we're recording this. It's on pretty Tuesday. inspiring to me, actually. I'm <laughs> I'm scared, but I feel funny and happy. About and, it. and and speaking of inspiration, what advice would you give to those people out there who want to be in like a cool Afro jazz Latin instrumental funk band? You know what what would you say like to people that want to put something together? where there's a lot of just sort of instrumental grooving going on? Um, well, the first bit of advice is don't do it for the money. Mm-hmm. Do it for the love. Um, and the other side of it is really, really be well-versed in the type of music that you're trying to present. You know, I think a lot of, you know, a lot of times it's digging deep, deep, deep into the influences of the artists that influence you that really kind of leads to some really, really special stuff and really makes you understand the genre. Um, so really kind of knowing your music and really getting, getting into it and taking the time to sit with stuff for a long, long time, taking the time to rehearse for a long, long time and really understand the music that you're playing really, really goes a long, long way in terms of uh, your ability to sort of take it to new places. Polyrhythmics. Polyrhythmics.com and polyrhythmics.bandcamp.com and then uh, you can get the, ba- the album uh, Libra Stripes and then how did that title come about? It, obviously zebra t- stripes but why libra well um we're you know we're surrounded with a lot of libras in our life as well so there's kind of a uh, there's kind of when we write our music we typically we have a rule in our band that we have to name something as soon as it's written if we don't oh. name it right as soon as it's written it just becomes you know groove one or groove two or grant song or grant song two and that becomes really really hard for us to understand so we have sort of this sporadic moment where we have to name a song and we kind of go around and we do it and a lot of times there'll be play on words or we'll take sort of influences that are that are around us at the time and Libra Stripes came about at a time where we were um, we had some very intru- influential Libras in our existence and the uh, the title sort of reigned supreme it sounded good and uh, that's just, just the way it went what time of the year is Libra what what dates are those that's well I you have to cons- consult your astrologer. For that. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get paid for those type of things. You know, I dated an astrologer, and she just talked about it all the time. I'm I'm amazed I don't remember any of it. Oh wait, no, I we broke up. That's why I don't remember any of it. Okay, you know, you just sort of it's sad when that happens. That was long ago too, Ben. In the '90s, it was a '90s romance. Well, you know what? If one door one door closes, and another door. That's closes. right. That's the way it works. You're so inspirational. Thank you, Ben. Uh, You're welcome. W- when you fall off the horse, you got to get back on. Uh, maybe on a different right. horse. But Mr. Wasabi rides again, also from Libra Stripes. Let's play that song now. And wh- how did Mr. Wasabi come about? So um, our very, very first, one of the very, very first songs that we recorded was a song called Pink Wasabi. And uh, pink wasabi was sort of about, you know, what happens when your wasabi touches the ginger in a sushi restaurant. Oh. And uh, um, and basically, uh, I'm sorry, excuse me here. My dogs are going a little crazy. Oh, what kind of dog I, do you have? Uh, we, I, my wife and I have two dogs. We have a Rhodesian Ridgeback Mutt and a uh, <laughs> Golden Retriever Border Collie mix as well. Oh, my gosh. So a Border Collie. I mean, a... Uh, uh, a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Those are great dogs. Is, is that the one that's barking? That's the one that's barking right now. The Rhodesian. Um, actually, that's our. That's the Border Collie one. Border Collie Golden Retriever. Okay, I have a boxer, yeah. and my boxer loves to play with Golden Retrievers and Rhodesian Ridgebacks. Loves. And then 
with the with the border collie in the golden retriever, I'm sure that dog is quite smart. You know, um, it's a smart dog. He's very good at getting what he wants. You know, as most dogs <laughs> yeah. are. He's also pretty cute, so that kind of helps. Yeah. Oh, I bet he looks great. And how? Uh, but sorry to get distracted there. Yeah, you know, we we're, were talking about Mr. Wasabi. So the pig wasabi was sort of the inspiration for the first tune, and then Mr. Wasabi was sort of a, a groove that was that to us was was sort of the the parent groove to pig wasabi. And uh, uh, so we kind of named it Mr. Wasabi Rides again to sort of pay tribute to that first one that we released. Oh, I get it. Very inside. I love this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's play that right now. By the way, how big is your Rhodesian Ridgeback? Those dogs get really, really big. Well, she's actually, she's pretty small. She's about uh, 60 pounds. Oh. And, and she's, you know, she's like a, a beagle Rhodesian Ridgeback mix. So she's got a little, oh. a little beagle in her as well. Okay. Yeah, I ha- I saw a smaller Rhodesian Ridgeback at the dog park the other day, and th- th- it was probably a little bit bigger than a, a a Chihuahua. It was bizarre. But huh. okay. Well, so Mister Wasabi rides again. Ben Ben Bloom. I almost called you Ben Bobo. Then that's your songs. <laughs> you can call me whatever you want, Mike. <laughs> uh, I'll be Ben Bobo, or am I Ben Papusa? I don't know. Um, but from the album uh, Libra Stripes. This is the group Polyrhythmics and Mr. Wasabi Rides Again. And you can find Libra Stripes all over the web. Uh, Polyrhythmics.com is the website to check out uh, for all the stuff. And oh, yeah, polyrhythmics.bandcamp.com. And see you Saturday at the Boom Boom Room in San Francisco. Sounds good. I can't wait to meet you, Mike. Cool. Mike's Daily Podcast with Polyrhythmics.
Mr. Wasabi rides again and Polyrhythmics as we go outside of the last place on earth where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley, California. Thanks again to Ben Bloom for being on the show. And here's today's podcast picture. Yes, the picture is about Stephen Colbert and also about b- drones. And John Deere, the engineer. Hey, John. Yes, Mike. Thank you for having me on your podcast picture. It's really a joy. I'm glad you liked it. You know, that was a lot of fun having you there. And it's always so great to have you on the show. I just, you, you bring so much to the show. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Hey, Valentino. Oh, dear. John did the engineer. Day. Did you eat a lot of tap ramen and college? No, I did not. And I didn't stir fry either. Sounds like it was a lot of fun in college living with Bison Bentley. It was a great time. It was a time of joy and clothes that smelled like they came out of a donut display case. Do you know that? Madam Runa Vega, you look quite lovely today. Thank you, John Deere's the engineer. I like your tie. Thank you. It's static free. Wonderful. Well, tomorrow we will bring you the return of the much-loved segment, Wow Shits Wow. Plus, we'll hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere, the engineer, you'll be back. I will be paid again, won't I? Yeah. It's not just a two-for-one. It's I mean, I get paid for both things. Don't worry about it. Jeez. It just costs a lot of money building time machines and maintaining them. I can imagine so. Oh, John Deere, the words you say are so profound. Nobody can understand me because I'm talking so low. It's the same problem that Ben Stein has. Oh, yeah, the for dry eye guy and the Bueller, Bueller, that guy. He had the show when Ben Stein's money on Comedy Central where Jimmy Kimmel got his start. Dang, I'm all full of TV trivia today. You're full of something. Ah, that's so true. <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye. Ben Bobo out. <laughs>